Japan Station is made possible in part by Patreon support. If you would like to make sure that I can keep bringing you more content like this, then head on over to japankyo.com slash Patreon and sign up for as little as $1 a month. Welcome to Japan Station, a production of japankyo.com. I'm your host, Tony Vega. So, if you listened to episode 100 with Kyle Broyles, one of the owners of Pintology in Tokyo, a craft beer bar in Tokyo. So, if you're curious about that, go listen to episode 100. But if you remember in that episode, I uh, was talking to him about food in his bar. And he mentioned that somebody in Okinawa was making cheese. And that got me really, really interested. So, I told him, hey, Kyle, give me the info for this guy. He did. I reached out. And today, you're going to get to hear a conversation that I had with that guy. So this is the cheese guy in Okinawa. His name is John Davis, aka Cheese Ojisan, the cheese uh, uncle or something. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> There's many ways to translate that, but uh, John Davis is a really, really interesting guy. He basically uh, retired, moved to Okinawa, and ended up just making cheese. And he's really good at it. And he's doing a lot of innovative things and he's becoming quite popular both in Okinawa and uh, in the rest of Japan, especially among foreigners, but in Japan among the locals as well. He's a really fun guy, uh, really just having a great time making cheese. And uh, we talk all about, well, cheese making and also his life up until that point when he decided to go to Okinawa and start making cheese. Uh, <laughs> so it was a really, really fun conversation. If you want to uh, buy some of his cheese, you can go over to okicheese.com. That's O-K-I-C-H-E-E-S-E.com. Uh, he's got tons of really good stuff over there. I haven't personally had it, but just listening to him talk about it has thoroughly convinced me that he's got some great stuff that I would absolutely love to try. So again, that's okicheese.com, like Okinawa and cheese, right? Oki cheese.com so here we go here's my conversation with john davis of okicheese.com the next stop is japan station the doors on the right side will open I really, really wanted to talk to you because you're doing something so unique and I want to do, okay. <laughs> you know, it's not every day you hear about, uh, you know, a, a, a guy making cheese in Okinawa. He just moved there. It's like, I'm going to make cheese now. It's like, <laughs> well, yeah. It wasn't exactly like that, but I mean, you know, it's a general idea, yeah. So, yeah. so I, I do want to talk about, you know, what you're doing now, but, you know, before, you know, that, I, I want to kind of understand, you know, how yeah. did you get to Japan and where did all that start? So what, what was your first, like, entrance into Japan? How did you get there? Well, mm, England in the 70s was not a happy place. Uh-huh. It was, uh, I just wanted to go somewhere. I didn't know where I wanted to go exactly. I was mid-twenties. I just wanted a little bit of an adventure, really. So I thought, I'll go to Australia, New Zealand. But then halfway there, there's Japan. I've never been to Japan. So I'll go to Japan, have a look at that. If I like it, I'll stay a couple of years and then move on to Australia and New Zealand. Mm -hmm. So I arrived in Tokyo and uh, was looking around for work. I'm basically a, a teacher. I'm an elementary school teacher. So I was looking for a position teaching English because seeing the English schools everywhere mm -hmm. and knocked on doors and so on. Oh, come in, Mr. Davis. Yes. Nice. Yes. Are you teaching English? Oh, fantastic. Yes. Please sit down. Where are you from? From England. Oh, sorry. Um, we can't use regional accents. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bit, the that's the only English up. allowed was American English. <laughs> yeah, I no know. Well, that's that. well, exactly what I said. Where do you think it came from in the first place, you idiot? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> we invented it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but no, everything was America those mm -hmm. days. When you get onto a train, kids mm -hmm. say, Mama, Mama, meet the girl, America. Uh -huh, uh -huh. They, yeah, they yeah, don't yeah. call you Gaijin. Yeah. The kids call you American. You know? Yeah. So, I'm not American, I'm British. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, even, yeah. Even nowadays, it's still kind of like that. Yeah. It is kind of, yeah. yeah. And like everything is influenced by the States, uh, cheese especially. Uh huh. I mean, industrial cheese, artisanal cheese, well, that's separate. That's yeah, a separate yeah. conversation because there's some great artisan cheese in the States. Mm 
fabulous stuff. But the the, the general, I don't want to mention any names, but uh, the big industrial cheeses have been copied by the big Japanese cheeses. Yep. They're tasteless. Yeah, I've noticed yeah. that in, in Japan. So, like, I'd go to the supermarket and be like, ah, you know, I, I can't get good cheese. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, so at first it was fine, you know, there's a lot of Japanese food that I haven't tasted before, and it was really, I was in heaven. And I began to miss it, because basically for, I think for any European, cheese is an essential. Yeah. Uh, for many Americans, it is too, but for many other Americans, it's just something to put on on, on pizza. It's just yeah. a topping for pizza. Mm. And... Um, for Japanese people, it's kind of slightly exotic. And then 50 years ago, it was really exotic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I remember going into a supermarket looking for the cheese. Right. And uh, managed to find the, the basically two kinds. There was processed cheese that was round-shaped and processed cheese that was slabs, uh -huh. square. Yeah. So the, only the shape was different, and neither <laughs> of them would melt if you put a blowtorch on it. I mean, really, <laughs> yeah. This is not cheese; it's cheese. If you if you've eaten ramen and yeah. cup noodle, you understand the difference. Right, right, absolutely, totally different. Yeah. Was that, and then then one day for my birthday, somebody gave me a bottle of wine, which I was very happy with, and, and a can of cheese. Uh huh. And I never had cheese in a can before, and it said camembert on the outside. This is great. And I picked it up, and it sort of rattled. Uh -huh. When I opened it up, this is tiny little piece of, of dried up, um, solid concrete thing in the bottom of the the can. I don't know what had happened to it, but anyway, it just solidified. It was totally inedible. What? And on the back of the can, it said in English, French. German and Italian, as far as I remember, that do not freeze. And in Japanese, it says, keep in freezer. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. oh boy. So near and so far. Uh -huh. So that was the scene. Then generally, as, as things went on, there was more and more variety of cheese, imported cheese living in Tokyo. It wasn't too bad. Yeah. Moved up to Hokkaido, to Sapporo. There's another big city. and There's a fair, fair amount of cheese there. Then came to Okinawa, and it's a cheese desert. Yeah. Oh, boy. There's nothing here at all. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, then I came here to retire, sold my business. I had English conversation school in Tokyo and Sapporo. Sold uh -huh. the business to come down here and retire, and uh, got bored with retirement after several months. <laughs> there's no cheese. So, okay, well, if the mountain won't come to Mohammed, Mohammed has got to go to the mountain so <laughs> I can make some cheese. Can't be that difficult. Yeah. So I got on the internet and read up everything I could find and went to Daiso. And that's a hundred yen shop, a cheapo shop. And here, there, and everywhere to get bits and pieces that I could use for cheese making. Managed to get things together and started experimenting in the kitchen. Yeah. And it was really good. Oh. It was really easy to make very good quality cheese especially in okinawa because the milk is very rich here oh really yeah so so that was fun and we played with this for a while and uh, i was going out on a milk hunt every morning looking for 50 percent off near the sell by date milk so they can make cheese with it yeah and i had a refrigerator full of cheese so uh, a friend of mine said why don't we have a cheese night in my bar so we did that and it was very popular so okay this beats retirement to make a business out of it so yeah. that's what happened huh yeah oh um yeah i mean like okinawa not not at all like i mean when you look at the traditional food yeah no no nothing cheese based i mean <laughs> yeah well, that's not, right yes yeah. no there's not it, it, I, and yet and yet you see as a as a place as an environment it's a perfect place to make cheese oh really huh yeah don't tell anybody <laughs> 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 no but i mean seriously uh -huh. the, if you look at the uh, the temperature range of the country, it's similar to many Mediterranean countries, huh. similar to Sicily, for example, which is famous for cheese. Yeah. The coldest it gets is about 10 degrees, uh -huh. that's Celsius, and the hottest it gets is about 30, 35. It's very humid in the summer, and the humidity is great for mold. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh. Plus oh. which it has lots of unique... Uh, spices and herbs and so on that mm -hmm. you don't find anywhere else, which are great for flavoring cheeses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. yeah. So I, I thought, well, you know, this place never had a cheese culture. It could have had. 
but mm-hmm. it actually didn't have one. So supposing there had been a cheese culture in Okinawa, what kind of cheese might they have made? Mm-hmm. And that was the standpoint. Mm-hmm. So I set about to use these spices and so on to, to create new cheeses. And that's what we've got. It's a whole 30, 40 kinds of cheese wow. that are so based what? on Okinawan things. Could, could you could you give a few Sorry? examples that, that are kind of inspired by the Okinawa, you know, what, what's available there? Oh, sure. I was trying to make a sage derby, uh, which involves um, fresh sage, and I couldn't find sage for some reason. Uh, they have stuff here called fuchiba, which is um, yomogi in standard Japanese, and mm-hmm. in English it's mugwort. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not... Yeah, it's a common weed all over the planet, really, but it's kind of famous in uh, Okinawa. They use it as food, mm-hmm. whereas uh, in in England, people cut it out of the garden. <laughs> right. But anyway, it's uh, it's got an interesting flavor to it. So I used that instead of sage, mm. and it made a very nice cheese. So that was a Fuchiba cheese, mm-hmm. was one. Another one which was really interesting is, uh, do you know Aom- Aomori? Yeah, the- the, yeah, the, 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 the liquor. liquor, right? Yeah, the liquor, yeah. So yeah, that's from correct. From Okinawa, yeah. The, mm, yeah, so that uses, f- to ferment it, they use uh, kurokoji, which is a black rice yeast, Yeah, I guess that translates as. And uh, I thought, well, that will, might be interesting to use in place of a starter culture in cheese, because basically what you have to make cheese is, first of all, you have to lower the pH. You have to slightly acidify it. And then when you put the rennet in, you'll get the separation of cheese and of, of curds and whey. So first we have to slightly acidify it. Well, uh, it turns out that uh, this kurokoji stuff is very acidic. Mm-hmm. So I said about to try and find some. Now, the company that makes them, uh, makes the stuff, didn't want to give it to me at first. Really? Because they're worried. Yeah, well, they're sort of worried that uh, somebody might, imitate oh make cheap our mori gotcha you know whatever uh-huh. yeah so anyway i persuaded him that i wanted to try it for cheese and he gave me some to try there's no data on this you don't know how much to put in <laughs> right uh, how long to keep it in there what temperature or any of this so it took us a while when you make a cheese you can't sort of like eat it the same day yeah right it has to mature you're talking about like waiting three months oh my god to find out if it's failed Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So it was a very sort of nail biting time. And we did this over a period of a year. We finally got a recipe, which is really cool. It's interesting. So, this is an entirely new cheese uh-huh. made with kurokoji. Yeah. Wow. Well, I just tons of things like this. It's just yeah. it's amazing. Huh. Well, any, anything, anything uh, that either is, is, inspired somehow by all the the pork or goes well with pork (laughs) (laughs) pork cheese now i'd never thought of that (laughs) sorry i I will just cut back in here sorry uh, john garbled out here it was kind of but we were saying that that he hadn't considered any pork inspired cheese (laughs) right 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 (laughs) yeah yeah i mean basically me means me um mixing meat and Uh cheese uh, in the refrigerator is not a good idea. Right, right, right. In, in the frying pan is a good idea. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but I don't think the health guys would be happy true, if true, I tried true. to sort of put lumps of pork in the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, couldn't help it because, you know, you're not so famous for the pork dishes. Uh, yeah, it is. It's is true. It's true. Uh, uh, um, maybe we could use pig milk. Oh, that would be interesting. Yeah. I yeah. don't know if you can set it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I know, also goat, I know who, right? I think goat is... Yeah, we do goat too. Yeah, yeah, our goat milk is famous. Our goat cheese is famous. It's fantastic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh. So... And the, uh, the, big, the big difference... Yeah. So go ahead. No, no, uh, go ahead. The big difference is... Uh-huh. Uh, the, the, the big difference between imported goat cheese, chevre, and so on, and ours, mm-hmm. is that stuff that's imported here is imported frozen, going back to the old oh. story. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, I mean, it doesn't... It's not frozen that would kill it, but it kills the rind on the outside. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And ours is fresh, and that rind is just gorgeous. I can't explain it. It's, yeah. it, it's absolutely lovely. Wow, wow, wow. No, I mean, yeah. that, that sounds so good. Uh, so mm. 
Well, you 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 mentioned um, you know we were talking in email that your the your cheeses were going to be at a supermarket now, and it seems like now you because. My, my, my understanding, maybe I'm wrong here, is that you were mainly selling to like the foreign community and people even like on the mainland of Japan were buying like my friend Kyle, who owns a bar in, in Tokyo, yeah, yeah. He's bought from you. Um, but now it seems like you're, you're, you're starting to branch out into within um, Okinawa itself. Yes. Well, that's. Um, so how, how did that? How, what's the progress want- there? I, maybe I got the, you know, kind of the, the timeline wrong there. But how how is the business expanding? By word of mouth. I mean, basically, that and Facebook are the only advertising we do. Mm, wow. Uh, uh, we don't advertise anywhere. Just mm. people bring their friends in and they recommend us to other places. And that's how it came up. Mm. That's how the supermarket said, could we have your cheese too? Mm. Wow. You know, they can see the long lines outside the shop. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted the long lines also in the supermarket. Well, I'm fine with that. That's yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as it gets out. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it seems like there's also interest from the locals, not just the foreign community. Oh, yeah. And that's exciting, too, yeah. because these are people who n- have never had real cheese. They've never had real yogurt. Mm-hmm. And once they have real yogurt, I mean, our yogurt, um, you can turn the pot upside down and nothing falls out. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, we, we take out the, the liquid, the, the whey, yeah. we drain it. So it's very solid. And it's got one ingredient, which is milk. That's all that's in it. Yeah. No chemicals, nothing else. And it doesn't use waste products, mm-hmm. whatever that the standard yogurt does in, in supermarkets. It's real yogurt. Yeah. And once they've had that, they can't go back. <laughs> Especially kids. Yeah. Mom, I want that yogurt. I don't want this stuff in the supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> you get them young. <laughs> well, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of kids are interested in cheese. I'm amazed. Oh, yeah. Even stuff like garlic cheese, which is strong. Yeah. They love it. Ah, it's so yeah. good. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. That, that's so, I mean, I, I love that, that, you know, you're, you've implemented kind of the Okinawa, some aspects of traditional, you know, Okinawa culture and food. And now oh, the, yeah, yeah, sure. the, the local people are, have, have taken an interest and appreciation in that as well. That's wonderful. Mm, 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 mm. Oh. So, so, so. Um, for example, on the yogurt, we don't put honey. Mm-hmm. Um, gosh, long story. Uh, friends okay. of ours make tor- Torganzuke, which is winter melon. You know, uh-huh. winter melon, the great, huge, great melons. Uh, they stew that up with sugar in some kind of process that I don't know, and it's a secret and so on. But uh-huh. they make a kind of candied melon, which is a, very sweet. And that what remains from that process is kind of syrup. Now, that syrup goes perfectly on yogurt. Uh-huh. It's just it's just a match made in heaven. Uh-huh. It's more like a maple syrup than honey. It's not uh-huh. so sweet, uh-huh. and it just it just goes. It doesn't honey sort of like covers the yogurt, and you can't taste anything else. Yeah, but this doesn't. It just goes hand in hand. It's lovely. Wow. So that's one, and then the torganzuki itself, the candied melon, yeah. that and our juniper and fennel cheese or the shikwasa cheese, it's it's fabulous. The sweetness of the torganzuki. Okay, and the uh, slight acidity of the shikwasa cheese just match perfectly. Yeah, yeah. The shikwasa. Um, do you know the English name for that? I, I've, I've heard it in Japanese, but I don't know what it's called. Shikwasa. Mm, it's the Okinawan. Uh, I'd call it ok- Okinawan lemon. Oh, okay. It looks like a lime, yeah, but it's yeah. actually a kind of lemon. Yeah, yeah. No, I've, I've had that just living mm. in Japan and, and tried it in various, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. flavoring is in various, you know, stuff. So I've had it, but. Oh, it's good. It is. It is. I like it. Yeah. Uh, any, yeah. any pineapple stuff? Because <laughs> they, they they like their pineapples too. Pi- pi- pineapple. Uh, some of our cheese, churanancho, for example, goes beautifully with pineapple. Uh, Just a slice of pineapple together. It, it really, really, really goes. Oh, uh, that's so good. Uh, mm. uh, um, so, but you also ship out to like the you know Honshu and, and other parts of Japan, right? Oh yeah, of course, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're we're at Yamato daily. Oh wow. Uh huh. Oh, that's great. Took, um, 40 packages the other day. <laughs> wow. <laughs> even even sending up to Hokkaido, which is kind of close to Newcastle. It's funny. Yeah. Huh. There you go. And that, that's so funny because, like, I, I mean, I, I know you said you lived in Sapporo before, but Sapporo is known for their dairy, right? Like, they're, they, they... Yeah, I don't know why. Like, <clears throat> I mean, I, I guess because cause they have a lot of space and so they have the cows and so they do. They yeah. Just, but their, their cheese, I like, I don't remember hearing, like, 
Sapporo cheese is like amazing. Like I don't, I don't hear that. <laughs> no, no, the beer is good. The beer is good. Yeah, so yeah, you make yeah. Excellent beer. Yeah, mm. but cheese, no, no. Yeah, the, there are some artisanal cheese makers up there, but mm. basically, my my opinion is it's just too far north. Oh. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too cold up there. I mean, it's, oh god. I, something the much I love about it, I, I, there's the space and so on. And I think in the Meiji period, when Japan sort of opened up, they said, "Well, okay, we've got this huge, humongous space up there. What should we do with it? Oh, we'll fill it up with cows and sheep." Yeah. And then I don't know why, but halfway through, they sort of gave up on sheep. <laughs> and uh, when you have Genghis Khan, yeah, you know Genghis Khan. Yeah, sheep. Uh, the, uh, uh, what's it called? Yeah. Lamb, I guess. Lamb, lamb. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, grilled lamb. It on a packet it says made in New Zealand or made in Australia. What? <laughs> huh? I don't seem to have any sheep there anymore. And yeah, so they've got all these cows there. So what should we do with them? Let's make cheese. Uh huh. Uh huh. But it's it's sort of mostly it's American style processed cheese. It's like craft singles. It's really exciting. That's yeah. sarcasm, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. And you did out if you like. <laughs> no, no, that I, I am on your side on that one. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. It, it's, it's interesting, right? Yeah, because they're, they're so known for the dairy. I guess the milk, um, you know. But yeah, I, I don't know what, what's up with that. They got great fish and great, uh, like Sapporo. I've, I've been to. Sapporo. They have great fish. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful sushi yeah. and the all fish that. is fantastic. Exactly, it's incredible. It's mm-hmm. lovely, but but not the milk. The milk <laughs> compared to Okinawa milk is very thin. Really? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Like the weather? It, huh? it doesn't have the fat content. Yeah. Well, I, I guess the cows. It's like minus twenty is just as severe for humans as it is for cows. I, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. So, yeah. Huh. And they don't have coats on. Yeah. <laughs> No coats so on cows, ladies guys, heard it. Running around. Yeah, right. <laughs> Naked cows. They're running around to, <laughs> trying to keep a sheep out of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good phrase. Naked Whoa. cows. I've never heard that phrase. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe they have coats on. I don't maybe, know. maybe. Maybe we'll they put to. them in heated rooms. I have yeah, no we'll idea. We'll have to investigate but, that. So. <laughs> but but our mumus down here, they're quite happy with the temperature because it's just very yeah. mild. Yeah. Okinawa is not as hot, really, as Tokyo. Yeah, yeah, that's so to- true. Tokyo yeah. in the Tokyo is like ridiculously yeah. humid, I mean, to- and the concrete and everything. I guess it reflects it. It gets really oh god, yeah. it's horrible. Yeah. Whereas here, uh, yes, it's the same temperature at night. That's mm-hmm. true. It doesn't get cold at night, but there's a sea breeze. It's mm-hmm. a small island. So yeah. everywhere is near the sea and you get the breeze coming from the ocean and it's not so claggy and uh, Tokyo, I can't breathe. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. I, I live in Hawaii and it's the same kind of things. Like, yeah, the temperature gets hot, but there's usually a nice breeze. So even in the summer when it's at its there hottest, yeah. it tends not to be Island, as hot yeah. as like Tokyo or Osaka where I've lived. So uh, uh, yeah, there's just a nice breeze going on. So it never gets that bad. Cool. Yeah. Mm. Um. So you make okay. cheese. Uh, the, so I I love cheese. I don't make cheese, and Hawaii is not known for its cheese. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. Could Why be, not? Right? I just learned that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Start making some cheese. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. I I absolutely love it. So maybe I should. <laughs> I'll send you an easy recipe. There's, oh, there's okay. a very easy one you can do. Yeah. Actually, I'll tell you now. You can yeah. edit it out if you like. No, no. Tell me. Tell me. This I want is to very know. simple. Mm-hmm. You need some kind of culture, right, yeah. to inoculate the, the, the milk. Mm-hmm. So what you do is get um, a couple of liters of, of good quality milk, mm-hmm. high-fat milk, low-temperature pasteurized, mix it with some yogurt, mm-hmm. and leave it overnight. Mm-hmm. And that will um, inoculate the milk. Oh. And then in the morning, you heat it up. Mm-hmm. And when it gets to about 85, 90 Celsius, mm-hmm. you'll get the separation. The curds and whey will separate. Mm-hmm. And you keep it um, keep it heated for a while until they're completely separate. Then pick up the curds, put them through a cheesecloth, add some salt, and press it. And you've got some very simple cheese. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, going on from that, uh, if, you put, if you mix it with grated garlic and salt, and then put, uh, what do you call it? Um, black pepper. Mm. 
on on the outside, a roughly grated black pepper on the outside, and press that. That makes a really nice cheese, and it lasts for months. Wow, that, that's really. You don't simple. need any yeah. special equipment or anything. Yeah, it's very simple. Oh, nice. Okay. Well, I I, I can definitely mm. experiment with that. <laughs> I'll start. I'll be the yeah. Hawaii cheese guy. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Um. Uh, so I'm. I'm. So just going a little bit back to like how you got started out in Japan. You know, like I, I'm a little bit curious about you know how you ended up. You know, the, the, how the rest of the story went. So you were going around looking for a job, and they were telling you like, oh no, we we want Americans. And then so I I take it yeah. you eventually did find something though, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I uh, found an Eikaio Gakko and I did my contract and it was horrible. <laughs> it was just Even not, back then, just, <laughs> the story never changes. <laughs> oh, God. No. Um, there are better ones now. This is yeah. the, the, the teaching method was to force them to speak English. And oh, every yeah. every time they used one Japanese word, it was 10 yen. And you have to get the. the wow, the, I've the never heard that. Find. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. It was ridiculous, and it was just like shut up and repeat. Uh huh. Uh huh. Wow. I'm going to the station. Repeat. I'm going to the station. Uh, hospital. I'm going to the hospital. I repeat. I'm going to the hospital. Uh, whether they understood it or not was not important. Yeah. Huh. Just repeat the sentence and so on, like be parrots. Yeah, yeah. And nobody really learned any English. It, it was just a waste of time. So yeah. I quit there and got a job in the university, which I thought would be better, but it wasn't a lot better. And then uh, mum died. I went back to England for a few months. And mm-hmm. uh, I, when I came back, I, I can't face going back to the university. I just quit the university and use one room in the school, in, in my apartment, right, as a school. Uh-huh. So this was right at the end of the 70s. It was perfect timing. So I just got onto a copy machine and... Uh, made some flyers and put them through doors and tons of students. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it almost overnight became I, quite a big business. And that, that was like, you know, really the economy was starting to get going. Things were starting to go crazy, I guess. It that. was. Yeah. It was. I mean, the, the going price for a uh, private lesson was 10,000 yen an hour. Wow. 40 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. That that's crazy. Of, yeah. Money. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So uh, then I had, I had too many students. I couldn't teach them all. So I started hiring teachers and then renting apartments on the other side of the road. And, and we had three apartments. We were using the schools. Wow. Huh. Yeah. So it was quite a big business. Then I was, by that time, after about 20 years, of getting fed up with Tokyo. So, okay, well, go somewhere where there's some space. So it's <laughs> going to go to Chiba, uh-huh. uh, which I kind of like Chiba, actually. But uh, I wanted to go sort of a bit further abroad, somewhere totally different. So I went up to Sapporo. Yeah. And that was nice. I enjoyed it for the first few years. And then uh, it's just too cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But w- yeah. did you did you set so up, shop a school up there. In, in Yeah, did you start a school yeah. there too? Yep, I did. Mm-hmm. English school up there. And then basically decided to sell up and retire. So you come down to... Okinawa. And the difference in the world of education and the world of food is just chalk and cheese. This is a totally different thing. The, the world of education is dark and gloomy, uh-huh. basically, yeah. in comparison to uh, people who like cheese, like wine. They're generally very happy people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, even when, it, it, even when they're not drinking You buy wine. it because you like it. You want to enjoy it. You want to savor it. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. They yeah, have a good time, you know. Yeah. People go to education because they they got to get a certificate, or they yeah. they, they got to get enough English, or the, the somebody says you got to do whatever. this. It's not, yeah. 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 It's very rarely because they're really interested in it and they want to find out more. If they do, if they're that kind of mindset, they wouldn't go to a school. Yeah. I mean, I didn't go to a school to learn Japanese. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. Yeah, like you know, I, I teachers, learned the most Japanese studying on my own. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Go to Izakaya. Talk yeah, to yeah, the guy yeah. next to you. Have a couple of beers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's the best way. Uh-huh. Watch the TV even. Yeah. Some of the TV programs, the kids are well, well worth watching. They're in education. But, Absolutely. Uh, teacher just gets in the way for me. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
So, okay, so then you, you sold off the business, you went to Okinawa, and the original plan was to retire, mm. but you found cheese, and, and this thing has been growing. So how, how's yeah, the business yeah, now? Yeah. Like, are you, you're, you can't do this by yourself anymore, right? Like, you have people working for no, you? No, no, no way, no. Mm-hmm. no. Yeah, I have, um, oh, there's about seven of us all together. Oh, wow. Huh. Yeah. So, yeah, it's building up. It's building yeah. up. So a I, lot of people are interested in making cheese too. Really? People say, are, you, are you looking for somebody to work with you? Yes, actually. Well, I really want to make cheese. Huh. I wonder. Yeah. yeah that, I mean, it's I, they, it's often said, you know, Japan in general has that kind of artisanal culture, I guess. So, you know, and, and plus you're doing something really unique where you're meshing like the whole cheese and the Okinawa thing. And so I, I guess there's just that appreciation and curiosity for it as well. Mm hmm. That's great. There's that, yes. Mm-hmm. Huh. And, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, no, and, and so, I, you know, originally you said you, you basically started with your refrigerator, but now, like, did you rent a, a location? Do you have a separate shop? Oh, yes, 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 yes. No, uh, when I decided to do this, mm-hmm. uh, obviously I needed a supply of raw milk. Mm-hmm. So I looked around for a dairy that I could work with. Mm-hmm. And a friend of mine introduced me to somebody who, who was their grandfather's uh, daughter's next door neighbor's school friend or something. It was a long, long, long connection, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever it was. Yeah. And uh, he had a dairy in Nanjo in the southeast of Naha, and uh-huh. he wanted to make cheese, but he didn't know how to. And John knew how to make cheese, but he didn't know where to get milk. <laughs> so it wasn't long before we were shaking hands and making plans. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we decided, so can I build a cheese factory on your land? Said, yes, of course. Use this land over here. So we built the first very small cheese factory, uh-huh. extended it, extended it, extended it. So we've now become quite a large space there. Uh, he supplies the milk and we turn it into cheese. Yeah. Wow. The only problem really is the price of milk. Now we have to pay the price set by the collective. Uh huh. And milk is very expensive here. Oh. In in other countries, it's subsidized, and it's oh. kind of unfair. Yeah. Uh, so we, we pay for a liter of milk, uh, about 200 yen. Wow. Per liter. And in order to make a kilo of cheese, you need 10 liters. Because oh, wow. uh, uh, milk is mostly water, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, that means it's 2,000 yen for a kilo of cheese, just in milk alone. Wow. Then when you add on labor costs and rent and tax and all the rest of it, it's difficult to make any kind of real profit. Yeah. Uh, you know, so we're paying 200 yen a liter. Then, for example, the Italian uh, cheesemaker is paying 50 yen. Yeah. He's paying one quarter of that. And the New Zealand cheesemaker pays 30 yen. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So opening up the market to other to cheese imports is actually very bad for us. Right, right, right. Yeah, wow. it's difficult to compete with this. That's tough, the, yeah. Our solution to that has been to make really specialized cheeses that nobody else can imitate. Yeah, no, that's what I was about that's to say. That's probably the like best way to go. You take a really smart strategy, both from a business perspe- yeah. perspective, but also just from a local, like, appreciate, pre- like the locals appreciate it, right? From that perspective as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, that's true. And there's, it's like kind of like surfing. You know, you've got the impetus from the local population. They want to promote their own cheese, yeah, their own products. We can use that. You see, we'll, we'll promote us then. We'll work together. It's yeah, like just yeah. surfing the wave. That's yeah. wonderful. That's wonderful. So I, I think you mentioned like there was a, they, they were the, some Japanese, uh, maybe it was a supermarket or like a local TV thing. They were interviewing you when something, when, when you started putting the cheese out in the supermarket, it was, is that, did I get that right? Yeah. Or am I remembering wrong? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I guess, I mean, there's been so many times like this. We've been on, yeah. we've been on t- TV so many times that uh-huh. I'm pretty well known here. Um, <laughs> Last December, yeah, I walked into Plaza House, which is a big shopping mall in yeah. Okinawa City. I walked in there with my Santa suit on. So, uh, you, you, do you know what I look like? I've got a long white beard. Uh huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, it's it, it's not one that you clip on. It's it's it's, it's a real <laughs> attached to my body. It was, it's hair. Yeah. <laughs> so I have this long white beard. I'm 74 years old, right? Uh-huh. So it's all white. Yeah, and um, 
So I walked into this uh, shopping mall with my red suit on and my red hat on as Santa. And the little kids turned to her mum, Okasan, Okasan, mummy, mummy, mitikuran, look. And I was expecting to say Santa. Uh huh. But she didn't. She said, Cheese Goji Santa. It's <laughs> the cheese guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. <laughs> so. <laughs> More famous than Santa. Yeah. Oh my God. You're the yeah. You really are the cheese guy. <laughs> cheese Oji Oh, that's so good. Cheese Oji So who, what's cheese Oji San? Cheese uncle, I suppose. Yeah, uncle literally, cheese. it's cheese uncle. But yeah, it's I guess cheese guy. Yeah. I, that's a perfectly fine translation, I think. But uh. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Oh, that's so good. Oh, boy. But it, it really sounds like you're, you're. I mean, it, it's a lot of work and, you know, you're building and you're expanding and, and you know, you're busy, but it, it sounds like you're really enjoying yourself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is totally fun. Uh-huh. It really is. You get to meet an awful lot of really nice people. Mm-hmm. So that's an absolute pleasure for me is yeah. to, to have people come into the shop and just take some time and, I know what cheese you like. I've got something in the back of the room that you, you know, and get out something I know they'd really like. Oh, that's great. And as I was starting to say, like, sometimes cheeses go, don't go the way you expect them to go. Uh-huh. It's handmade, right? And it depends who makes them and you, people make mistakes and so on. But it's never inedible. Yeah. And uh, the other day, let's see, somebody about three years ago made some pecorino with goat milk. Uh-huh. And it was like concrete. <laughs> I mean, you could <laughs> you could use it as a boat anchor. It was just like uh-huh. it was solid. So okay, we'll tame this. So I, I put it in Aomori, the Okinawa liquor. I put it in Aomori for about a year. Oh wow! And, oh god, it's amazing! It's amazing! Huh? Wow! That is a totally incredible cheese. Wow! But you wouldn't eat it while driving. <laughs> <laughs> Or flying a plane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't make your sandwiches with that. You don't. You don't. Eat, wouldn't eat a sandwich with it. And just yeah. a tiny piece has got so much flavor in it. Uh-huh. With the awamori and the original goat cheese. Wow, it's incredible. Uh-huh. Well, that that is wonderful. That is wonderful. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, like I said, you're you're. That's wonderful. You're enjoying yourself. You're experimenting, and you're still, you know, trying new things. Um, do you have a particularly like let's say favorite creation or even like a particularly bad, like, Oh my God, like this went totally wrong. (laughs) Uh, The the one that went totally wrong Uh was I thought I'll, I'll make one with seaweed. There's an asa is a kind of seaweed. It's very similar to nori. Uh Do you know nori? Nori, the the seaweed, the the dried seaweed. Dried seaweed. That's right. Mm-hmm. Well, fresh, it looks like black um, gunk. Mm-hmm. So I, I thought, well, I'll cover the cheese with this on the outside, and I'll use a white mold. So the white mold will grow over this black seaweed, and it'll look really cool. I'll cut mm-hmm. into it and get this beautiful black line. Um, but unfortunately, the, uh, the, the, the seaweed and the cheese did not like each other <laughs> at all. And after a week, it smelled like something that had died in agony on the beach. <laughs> oh <my> it, was, <laughs> it was it was obscene. So oh I God. threw it as far away from me as I could get it. <laughs> that was a total failure. So I decided like, things that come from the land belong on the land. Things that come from the sea belong in the sea, and the, <laughs> no, never the twain shall meet. <laughs> oh. Maybe like maybe like pig and cheese as well, pork and cheese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh boy! So that was that was run went bad. That my yeah. favorite is probably Stracchino. Uh huh. Stracchino is all over the Mediterranean. You find this uh, simple white cheese, which is usually heavily salted and kept in slabs and cut up in slices. Mm-hmm. In Greece, you have feta. In uh, Turkey, they have panir, and in Italy, they have Stracchino. Mm-hmm. And it's it's an absolutely lovely cheese. Mm. This one, um, how can I describe it? It goes very soft. It's very salty, so it goes perfectly with nihonshu, oh. Japanese sake. Mm-hmm. It just it really does. Then after a while, somebody um, sent me a picture of this. They they uh, kept the container that it was in for several months and opened it up. It got this blue mold on the outside. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, oh, that's interesting. Oh, did you try eating it? No, I thought it might be poisonous. Well, it won't be poisonous, but um, I'll replace it for you if you like. So he replaced it. We got it home late. It was good. It was really oh. good. Then I looked on the internet, and I found that the old name for gorgonzola is Stracchino di Gorgonzola. Oh. It's the same cheese oh. as gorgonzola. Uh -huh. It's just that with gorgonzola, you mold it, make it round, and you mature it for much longer. The oh. Stracchino is generally fresh. Mm -hmm. So Stracchino will turn into gorgonzola in time. <laughs> interesting yeah, oh. that's, 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 that's interesting things like that you know? yeah so it's tricky you know when it's at that stage when it's starting to go blue it's just that's amazing oh wow i, I, I wish i could I, one, one day maybe uh apple is going to invent the scratch and sniff interface yeah exactly so you pull up your iphone and you know and sniff the surface of the yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You can lick the screen. Or maybe lick, lick, you lick the screen exactly. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Those phones are going to be so dirty. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Uh, maybe I should suggest it to Apple. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like a disposable screen or something. Because, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. oh my God. Uh, all right. So, but wouldn't for, that be amazing? You, you could yeah. go ahead. Yes, oh, no. Yeah. 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 You, you could finish off. <laughs> Yeah, they just download some beer or something. That would be really yeah, yeah. cool, wouldn't it? I mean, that's really like you the put next your step. iPhone over a, over a glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, wouldn't that yeah. Amazing. Matter of time, right? Matter of time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Several hundred years, probably. Maybe, maybe we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe not for us, but so eventually people will be eating their phones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, edible iPhone. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Flavor of the month. Yeah. Oh God. Uh, so, uh, so for, especially, I guess, you know, for anybody that's visiting Nokia now, they, they can actually go to the shop and, um, like sure that where's the information for that? Is that on okicheese.com? The, the best. Yes, it is. And the best way to get me is email me at john at okicheese.com. Wonderful. Wonderful. And it's then, easy enough to remember Then, then I'll, I'll give them directions. Great, great. And then okicheese.com, like you can actually buy cheese on there if you're in Japan, right? Oh, yes, of course. In mm -hmm. Japan. But we can't ship abroad, unfortunately. Right, right, right. Okay, so that's oki, like okinawa, O-K-I, and then C-H-E-E-S-T. -E cheese. Like cheese okicheese.com. Nice yeah. and easy to remember. So, yeah, you can yeah. get your cheese from uh, Cheese Oji-san. <laughs> cheese Oji-san. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, John, uh, that was an absolute pleasure to, to learn about what you're doing and, and get to talk to you. Thank you so much. Just do it!